Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 849. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, 848 to 849, click on the link below the video. In this video here, we have a data set with uh, dates spanning a couple years, and we want to type in any date here, get the first day of the week starting on Monday, the last day, and then extract all the records for that week with a formula. Now there's a bunch of ways we could do this and I actually have a bunch of answer sheets if you download those and I'll review some of those as I, at the very end to show you the different methods. Uh, I'm going to do the method here that will work in 2003, 2007 or 2010. Alright, so I have all this data randomizing so if I hit the F9 key it's all changing that way we can see how uh, the formulas totally update when we change the data. All right, or the, the the input here. Now the first thing is I need to get from this date right here. I'm going to hit F9 again. So it's on Sunday. If I put Sunday 6, 12, 11, I need to have as the start date the Monday from last Monday. So I need to, in essence, subtract uh, or get to the last Monday and then show uh, the end of the week start um, for that Monday here. Well, the way I'm going to do that is for the start date. I'm going to use the date function. Whoops. I'm going to increase the row width. I'm going to use the date function. And a date is great because you just put your name and then whoever you want to go out with, and you get to go out on that date. No, no, no. You put in the year, the month, and the day, and it generates the serial number, which is a date in Excel. So I'm going to say, hey, give me the year of this. Comma, and the month, I'm going to say, hey, give me the month of this. Whoops. Right now, it'll get 2011 for year and 6 as the month. But the day, this is the tricky part, because we always need it to tell us Monday. Well, I'm going to say the day of this. Now, right now, this is the 12th. But what would we have to subtract from that, the 12th, to get back to Monday? Well, we'd have to subtract 6 days. So watch this the weekday function can tell us 0 for Monday, 1 for Tuesday, 2 for Wednesday, all the way till 6 for Sunday. So from the day function, which right now it's delivering 12, I'm going to subtract weekday. Now weekday. Serial number, this right here. So right now to get the 12, when I change it later, it'll be whatever it is. Right? But here's the trick, comma, the return type, you want 3. So there it delivers number 0 to 6. The number 3 option is just awesome. It's built for exactly this situation where you always want to jump back to Monday. So I'm going to put a 3. Right? So right now it's saying 12 minus 6 is going to give me 6, right? So if I highlight this and hit the F9 key, it gives me exactly what I want for this year, this month. The cool thing is, also, Control Z, is the date function. If this happens to be the first, it'll give me a 1 here and minus whatever. And the fact that we put a minus into the day argument, the date function knows how to deal with that. So even if the year and the month are not right here, the fact that we put a negative day here, it'll go back in time and do it perfectly. All right, so that this little formula here will give us the start of the week no matter what. Notice it's now 314. It gives me exactly the right date. If I hit F9, there's a Monday, a Sunday, Sunday, Tuesday. It's always giving me the correct Monday. All right, so the end is always going to be this I don't know why this does this sometimes. I know it's because of formatting, but sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. I'm going to say this plus 6, and that will always give me the Sunday. So now if I hit the F9 key, boom, I'm getting the span I want perfectly. I'm going to double click there and double click there. Now the count, I need to count between these two as criteria from looking through this column. This is the lower, this is the upper. Now I'm going to do a formula that's not some product but will work in any version, uh, 2003 or whatever version. I'm going to use two count if functions, not with because count if with an S is in 2007 but not 2003. Now the idea here is I have these are dates, these are serial numbers. This is the bigger number, this is the lesser number. So if I do a formula count if, I'm going to 
look at this entire column, control shift down arrow F4, F4 just to jump it back up, comma, and the criteria, I'm going to say show me in double quotes the comparative operator will be less than or equal to n double quote ampersand this. Now right now that'll count all of the dates less than the bigger date. Got it? But from that I'm going to subtract count if all of the the range is the the date column all of the dates and again the comparative operator has to be in double quotes less than this lower date. So in essence, this is a way of counting between using two count if. And the count if function usually will count, even two of them will usually calculate faster than the sum if with arrays, although you always have to time it to make sure. So there you go. Those two formulas will work. The, again, the idea is everything equal to that and less, subtract everything less than that, and that gives us the between. So there's 10. All right, now, the formula here. We're going to have to do an array formula because here's the problem. Anytime you're looking up, we're in essence going to look up uh, any records that are between these, but there's 10 of them. So then we have to switch to an array formula. Now, we're also going to have to take into consideration that sometimes if I hit the F9, it'll be 9. Sometimes it'll be 12. So I need to turn this formula on and off. So I'm going to use the if function to start this. And I'm going to say if rows. And I'm sitting in E7. So I'm going to say E dollar sign 7 colon E7. This is our number incremental. It'll go 1, 2, 3, 4 as we copy down. Anytime that is greater than that. F4 key to lock it in all directions. If that's true, I mean I'm on past row 12. What do I want to show? The value of true, double quote, null string. That'll show uh, nothing. Otherwise, and here's our big array formula. I'm going to use the index function, which is a lookup function. The array. Now, here's the thing. This is great. We're extracting the same row in the same order. So I'm going to click in that top cell, Control shift down arrow, and F4 key twice to lock just the row reference. So when it copies down, it's locked on the date column. But when this formula moves to the next column, the whole dancing ant range will move. Comma. Now, what do I need? I need all the row numbers where the actual date here is between these two. Remember, we're also going to have multiple row numbers. So I'm going to use the small function. The small function will allow us to build an array of row numbers in the array argument and pull them out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In fact, I could go like this, comma, and the k is going to be this, that same number incrementer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right now, that'll be 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, I'll close parentheses on the uh, small. And this is the big part. We're just going to do um, two ifs that ask, is any data in this column uh, greater than or equal to this and less than or equal to this? If that's true, then sh tell me which row it is. All right, so you ready? Two ifs in a row. Same date column, Control shift down out F4. Anytime that's greater than or equal to this lower date. Now notice some, whoops. I'm going to hit the F4 key here. Notice something. When you're doing a straight array formula, where you're doing a comparative operator on array, you do not have to put it in double quotes. But you remember up here when we were doing a function like count f, then you had to put the, and we were joining it, we had to put the comparative operator in double quotes. All right. Logical test, that's the first one. We go comma, and the next one, well, we can't put our row numbers in there yet because there's still one more condition. So I put a second if. Same date column, control shift down to F4, but this time it's less than or equal to. Notice also, since we have two conditions um, that are looking straight at the numbers and we're not doing that subtracting thing, you have to include the equal sign on both of these because we're we want both of those, the Monday and the Sunday. Now I'm going to F4 this, comma, and then the value. If true, this is where we put row, and I want the row row function, not rows, of all of these. Now remember, right now, if we were to evaluate this F4, it would give me all the row numbers, and that's not what I want. Not only that, it would give me 2, 3, 4, and I don't want that, so I have to subtract row from it now, of the first one, F4. That gives me now 2 minus 2. That wouldn't work. That I want 1, 2. I want uh, 1, 2. The number's 1, 2, 3, 4, so I have to add 1 back in. You know, this is, there's other ways to do this, but this is robust. If you insert any rows above um, or move the columns over, it'll work. If I hit the F9 key, you can see it gives me all the 
the rows. Oh, that's a lot. I'm going to quickly click Control Z. But notice what is it doing? The if is going to isolate, giving these two conditions and only give us the rows where uh, the, the criteria uh, match. All right, now we don't need the value of false, so I'm going to close parentheses. Close parentheses a second time, and there's our array. If I were to highlight both of these ifs here and hit the F9 key, we get a bunch of falses and everything, and there should be some numbers in there. I can't show it on the screen. Oh, there's a, a 1,048. So there are some row numbers in there. I'm going to control Z. If I highlight the entire small, because I'm in the first row, and hit F9, it'll give me the, exactly the first row number for the first record that matches F9. So that's 119. All right, so there is that huge small right there is all just to get the row number. All right now I come to the end. I don't need the column number because we're just extracting data from rows. The false, that is the false. This entire index out up here is the false. So I close parentheses on that. And now this is an array formula. The fact that we put these multiple logical tests into the ifs require control shift enter, not just enter. So control shift enter. And then I'm going to copy it over. There, I'm going to point to the smart tag and say fill without formatting. And then I'm going to copy this down. All right. So now I'm going to hit the F9 key. All right. So and by the way, I have a randomizing formula here, and the data is randomizing. So now we put in 216 on Wednesday. It gives me the proper span for the week and it extracts all those records. If I hit F9 some more. All right, so this one was for 2003. Uh, in 2007, you might want to use the count ifs instead. Uh, a little bit easier than the two count ifs. And you could use the if error instead of the if function. In 2000, let's see, what else do I have here? Uh, count ifs. In 2000, oh, that's the same. In 2010, however, you can use the count ifs here, but you can avoid control shift enter and instead of using small, you use aggregate. And then aggregate knows how to do the small by putting a 15 here. That tells it to avoid errors, and then you build your array to extract the row numbers that way, and it avoids control shift enter. All right, so that's a little bit about how to extract records for any given week from a data set. See you next video.